through his daily morning devotional, Word to Go, to his scriptural insights in time with Pastor Otomi, and his inspiring sermons on Sundays, he keeps impacting lives across the world through the ministry of God's Word. Get ready to be inspired, to be liberated, and to be equipped for the days, the months, and the years ahead. Bringing us God's Word, ladies and gentlemen, let's rise to our feet and give glory to the Lord as we welcome the founder and general overseer of the International Central Gospel Church, Pastor Mensa Otabiu. Somebody give praise to the Lord God Jehovah Almighty, the ruler of the universe, our King of Kings, our mighty warrior, Jehovah Almighty, the Holy Spirit, our comforter, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to him be all glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power forever and ever and ever and somebody shout hallelujah i have titled my message tonight just in time somebody say just in time many times in the bible we see that god operates a just in time delivery system he gives us what we need when we need it not before we need it there was no need for a ram when abraham was going to sacrifice isaac there was no need for a ram ahead of time but just in time when Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, the ram showed up. Many times when we trust God and pray and believe God, we want to see the miracle ahead of time. But God brings the miracle just in time. At the appointed time, at the appropriate time, just when you need it, it shows up. So don't get worried when it delays because God has a just-in-time delivery system for you. And may the Lord give you a just-in-time miracle. When God gives us a just-in-time miracle, it, it appears as a sudden work, as if it just happens suddenly. When you think it's too late, he shows up when all the doors have been shut he opens them and may the lord give you such a visitation so i'm going to start reading from joshua chapter 10 and i'll read our focus today on verses 5 to 9 but i'll give you a background to the story before i read it joshua has taken over the leadership of Israel from Moses. Joshua was a military man, an army man, an army general, a warrior. And his task was to ensure that the children of Israel got to the promised land and each of the tribes got the land that has been promised them. So when he got to the promised land, he started occupying the land so that the promise of God would become a reality. The first battle he fought was the famous one we are all familiar with. That was the battle of Jericho. And then after that, he went to fight the second battle, the battle with Ai. And they disobeyed God, so they lost that battle. And then they fought a third battle with the same city of Ai and won it. So we can say that at this time, they have fought two major cities, but three battles. 
Now, when the people in the surrounding area saw what was happening, in the first place, the Jordan had opened, they had come through, Jericho is falling, Ai is falling, they just decided, let's go make peace with these people. So one of the tribes in the area, or one of the cities in the area called Gibeon, decided that they would go to Israel to make peace. They went to Israel and made peace. They told a lie that they were traveling from afar. As a matter of fact, they were traveling from very close. But they said they traveled from afar. And Joshua said, okay, we will not conquer you because you come in peace. Later, they realized that the people had lied. When the other kings in the area heard that Gibeon had gone to make peace with Israel, they decided to go and fight Gibeon, wage war against Gibeon. And the Gibeonites, who now have a peace treaty with Israel, went to Joshua and said, by the way, after we signed the peace agreement with you, five kings have come against us and they want to fight us because we signed peace with you. And Joshua decided to side with the Gibeonites and fight this battle. I'm giving you all of this background because it is key to the message I'm going to preach. So with this background in mind, we read from verse 5 to verse number 9 of Joshua chapter 10. And it reads, Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, at this time Jerusalem was not the capital of Israel, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jamoth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered together and went up and all their armies and come before Gideon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon went to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal, saying, Do not forsake your servants. Come to us quickly. Save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them. For I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. I feel that is God's word to somebody tonight. Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand, and not a man of them shall stand before you. Verse 9. Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgal. My focus in this passage is the verse 9. Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having much all night from Gilgal. When you read this story, you ask yourself, why did Joshua bother himself to fight this battle? Because after all, the Gibeonites had lied to him. Why did he decide to fight a battle that was not his battle? Well, it was his battle by extension, but it was not his battle directly. Why did he get involved in this battle? Because this battle was a strategic battle. Why was it a strategic battle? God had promised Israel all of the land. The strategy they had had was take one city at a time. You take Jericho and you take Ai. In Ai, you fight two battles actually for one city. But this time, five cities, almost all the major towns and cities came together. So Joshua therefore strategically considered, instead of waiting to fight one city at a time, if all of them have come together, then I better take advantage of this opportunity 
Because with one victory, I'm going to conquer five cities. You know, sometimes when all your enemies gather together against you, it is a strategic moment for God to give you a victory that has a far-reaching consequence than taking on one enemy at a time. If you feel yourself surrounded by many enemies, they have joined together against you, I have good news for you. It is a strategic alliance for a strategic purpose. So sometimes God will bring you strategic battles to fight. Those strategic battles seem like a big threat, but they are also strategic opportunities. And strategic battles of that nature do not come with announcement. It just piles up against you. One pops from here, the other pops from there, the other pops from there, and all of a sudden you are surrounded. Yes, it looks like a threat, but if you see it like Joshua, it is God's opportunity. I believe that in our lifetimes, we will fight many of such battles. As a matter of fact, we are engaging one of them at this time. It's called COVID. I believe COVID is a strategic battle. We must fight and win. It's not just a health battle. That's the easiest one. But the total disruption that COVID has brought to the entire world. Reduce everybody to the same level. At the beginning of this COVID, I said that this was the finest moment for third world countries, nations like Ghana, previously despised. This is our moment. Because whenever there is a major systemic disruption, the winners are not the major people. The winners are the minor people. It was in the midst of such a major systemic disruption that David emerged as king over Israel because Goliath disrupted Israel. It disrupted King Saul. It disrupted the military system. No general could fight until one shepherd boy emerged and took down this giant and saw his promotion. So what we see as disrupting the world may become our stepping stone to greatness. I was very excited when at the beginning of COVID, we were all very excited about getting inside, doing things by ourselves, producing our own mass, producing our own raw material. And then after some time, we said, let's go back and import. Let's go back and import. Let's go back and import. We are just about missing a strategic opportunity. If outsiders seize the moment, they will emerge the winners. So here is Joshua in the battle defending the Gibeonites who had lied to him. But he has a sense of, a sense of honor to fight for them. Not because of the Gibeonites, but because he can see the finger of God in this battle. So when he heard about it, he decided to go into this battle. But he did the most unlikely, probably unrealistic thing. Because if you are one army, Israel, and you have five armies against you, you want to face the five armies in your strongest form, refreshed, energized, not tired, not weak, not hungry. But Joshua started from Gilgal. And the passage says, he marched all night. How do you march all night? 
to go and fight an enemy who has been sleeping all night. Because if he's been sleeping all night, he'll be stronger than you, he'll be better rested, he'll be better focused, your army will get to the battlefield tired. But that's what Joshua did. All throughout the night, they were marching. They were marching. They were marching. The troops were tired, but they were marching. No sleep, no food, no rest, marching. The enemy was sleeping. They were marching throughout the night, throughout the night, throughout the night. The night in the Bible represents many things. It represents uncertainty. It represents weeping, pain. It represents isolation. So Joshua and the army are marching throughout the night. They can't even tell whether they are making progress or not. They can't see anything to tell them you are moving forward. All they're doing is keep marching and marching and marching and marching. They have no food to eat, but they are marching. They have no encouragement, but they are marching. They are isolated, but they are marching. And they are marching through the night when others are resting. They are working in the night. They are marching in the night. Others are enjoying, but they are marching in the night. Some of you feel that way in your life. Because you feel that your life it's a long march in the night. You've been marching. For us, for the last 40 days, we've been marching in the night. Praying and fasting and praying and fasting and praying and fasting and praying and fasting. And then somewhere along the line, your body is tired. You feel like breaking your fast. You feel like going to eat something. You feel like catching up and building your energy. But you keep praying and fasting and people are eating and eating and you are praying and fasting and marching. For some of you, you feel your whole life you've been marching and never arriving. You've been working so hard but never reaping the fruit of your labor. You've struggled so hard to make it, but you never make it. You've prayed year after year after year after year after year. Keep marching in the night, in the dark. Nobody sees you. Nobody praises you. Nobody encourages you. Don't stop marching. Don't stop praying. Don't stop trusting God. Because just in time, suddenly, there will be a shift. So the Bible says that as Joshua was marching throughout the night with his army, a tired army, suddenly, they were upon their enemies. And I suppose that the enemies were still asleep. They came upon them suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. The Hebrew word is pit om. Suddenly. It means something that happens very quickly. In fact, in the Bible, that Hebrew word is used in various parts. In Psalm 64, verse 6 and 7, it says... The psalmist is talking about his enemies and it says they devise iniquities. And whilst they devise iniquities, they say, we have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of men are deep, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. In Isaiah 48 verse 3, it says, I have declared the former things from the beginning. They went forth from my mouth and I shall cause them to hear it. Suddenly I did them and they came to pass. Pit on. Suddenly. Something that happens at the right time, an act of God. 
So that's what happened. They've been walking through the night. It looks like it's a useless walk. It's a bad strategy. It's a non-productive strategy. But just in time, something happened. I believe we are in such a moment in our lives. One moment you are in darkness, the next moment you are in the light. One moment you don't know where you are going, the next moment you have arrived. One moment the enemy has the upper hand, the next moment they are knocked out cold. One moment everybody has left you behind, the next moment they are all trying to catch up with you. That is God's just in time delivery system. In Joshua's case, both Joshua and the enemy had a suddenly. Joshua's army is marching in the night. In the night. It's almost like, you know, you're climbing a mountain, you're climbing a mountain, you're climbing a mountain, you climb and climb and climb. Then you get to the mountain top and suddenly you see a totally new picture from what you saw before. So Joshua's army, by dawn, upon their enemies. The enemy also had his own suddenly. He's sleeping. He's comfortable. We have the numbers. We have the advantage. We have the victory. We're going to win this one. These people are new. They don't have experience. We will get them. We are more than them. Let's sleep. Let's relax. Tomorrow we'll get them. Then suddenly... Joshua appears. Both of them had a suddenly. The night before, there was no sign. The next morning, everything changed. I came here just to speak to some people who have been marching in the night. You've been marching in the night. It's been a night march. A night march. For some of you, there is one prayer topic. You've been praying your intestines out, your heart out, your liver out, your lungs out, your throat out. You are pulling your hair and it seems as if nothing changes. But suddenly, there will be a visitation. What if God had given Hannah a child when she prayed for a child the first time? We would never have heard of her and we would never have heard about the child. What if God had given Elizabeth and Zachariah a child the first month they married? We would never have heard of them, and we would never have heard about John the Baptist, and we would never have heard about his ministry. But just in time, suddenly, when all of them thought, this thing is not going to work. I've done it over and over and over. God shows up, and suddenly it happens. The thing about God suddenly is that it is not suddenly. It just doesn't happen. It happens after a long march in the night. That's why sometimes people look at you and say, where did you come from? All of a sudden, you are all over the place. All of a sudden, you are prospering. All of a sudden, you're broken through. All of a sudden, they think you are Johnny just come. They think you just appeared. When you were marching in the night, they never saw you. When you were toiling in the night, they never saw you. But God saw you. God saw your prayer. He saw your toil. He saw your desire. He saw your effort. He saw your night vigils. And when nobody was watching, he sprang it over them. That's God's just-in-time delivery system. After a long walk in the night, just before Joshua got to that point, God said to him, don't be afraid, Joshua. I have given this thing into your hand. 
and no one can stop it. There are things that God has put in your hand and no one can stop it. They may have power, but they can't stop it. They may have privilege, but they can't stop it. They may be more armed than you, but they can't stop it. They may be more in number than you, but they can't stop it. Because what God has given you in your hand, he has put in your hand. And throughout the night, when they were walking and pushing on, I'm sure one soldier will say to the other, where are we going? We don't know where we are going. Does Joshua know where he's going? We don't know. All we know is this night we won't sleep. We are marching. And the next moment it was all different. I am a full believer in God. I don't know about you, but I believe in God. I am a full believer in divine purposes. I am a full believer in Africa and its destiny and its future. I am a full believer in the black race and our dark skin and the purpose for which God made us dark and put us on this continent. I'm a full believer that God does not make mistakes. Because as an African, sometimes you wonder, when will it be day? We be marching and marching and marching and marching in the night. Today is Founders Day in Ghana. We've been marching in the dark since those guys were around. We've been marching in the dark when our ancestors were taken as slaves on slave ships. Many died in the process. It was dark. Then we were colonized. It was dark. Then we gained independence. We thought it was light, but it was dark. Kwame Nkrumah said, the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked with the total liberation of Africa. The total liberation of Africa came and we were still marching in the night. Even South Africa that we all thought was going to show the way, is marching in the night. So sometimes as an African, you look around and you say, will this march ever end? Will we live to see our hope become a reality? We will get out of the mess and the darkness. I am a believer in Almighty God. I am a believer that God does not make mistakes and God does not create mistakes and God does not put people in a place for a mistake. Everything God does is for a purpose. Is for an assignment and his purpose is for good and not for evil his purpose is for good and not for evil so I announce to you Africa you be marching in the night it's been a long March we don't know when the March is going to end but I know from Scripture one day one morning God's in time just in time delivery system will be handed over to us and suddenly suddenly there will be a change in the story somebody say oh that is just a fantasy everybody thought china was a fantasy they march in the dark since their dynasties darkness darker than us darkness darker than us but just about 50 40 years ago suddenly they, have, they are overtaking the United States of America. If it can happen to them, I suggest to you the God of purpose who doesn't make mistakes with any group of people, who doesn't discriminate against any people, who doesn't disadvantage any people, that same God, the God of the nations of the world, 
We are coming out of our darkness. I said we are coming out of our darkness. And not only are we coming out, you are coming out. I said you are coming out. There are some of us who have never smiled before. You will smile. You have never rejoiced before. You will rejoice. You have never lived in your own home before. You will live in your own home. You have never had your own money before. You will have your own money. And some of you have been sick for a long time. In the dark, marching, fighting sickness and disease. I announce to you, God is delivering you from that sickness. Your healing will spring forth in the morning. So today we affirm our faith in God. Somebody say, I believe in God. We affirm our faith in God's purpose for our continent. Somebody say, I believe in Africa. We affirm our faith in our race. Somebody say, I believe in the black person. And we affirm our faith in God's purposes for our life. Somebody say, I believe in my future. 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 I will not be a failure because God does not create failures. I will not be a disappointment because God does not create disappointments. I am marching in the night. I am marching in the night. I am marching in the night. The enemy is mighty, but I am marching in the night. I am believing in the night because suddenly, just in time, I will arrive. Just in time, I will arrive and God will fight for me. Tonight, on this first night of greater works, God wants to tell you, your march in the night is taking you somewhere. Somebody say, I'm going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. I'm going where God wants me to go. Say, I will arrive. Say, I will arrive. I will arrive. I will arrive. Say it like you believe it. Beat your chest and say, I will arrive. I will arrive. Just in time. I will not miss my time. I will not miss my moment. I will not miss my season. I will not miss that day. I will arrive. Just in time. 